a scion of many worlds. Well, this just became a lot more complicated, Dr. Skidderway notes as Horace clucks his tongue and Emmanuel is already rising to get things sorted. All right, girls, you are now to do a search and rescue pattern. Check all energy signatures in the wreckage and confirm everything visually. But remember to take your time and be safe. They've been in stasis for a millennia. They can survive the few more minutes it will take for you to not put yourselves in danger. That's right. We have potential survivors from the crash. Look up any version or hint of stasis sickness in the medical records. After being under for that long, we're bound to have a pandemic of those kinds of messes. Get every medical bed we have primed and ready. We still don't have full numbers and... Horace says into his communicator. I need to speak to the peoples. The political and cultural ramifications of this are going to shake Lacran, Emmanuel states as he gets up to leave. Especially Isereason. It could go well or poorly at the idea of her having potential peers. I don't think that these people will count these rescued individuals as peers to a primal Nagasha who mothered an entire demographic. Dr. Skidderway says, and he shrugs even as he leaves. Regardless, these people need to know. They've had a lot of shocks to their worldview, and this one could be the straw that breaks the camel's back, to borrow the human saying. The last broken line that loses the web to use your own people's saying. And I believe the Earthani variant is the final creak of wood to send you fluttering away. I think that last one is likely to change soon. Horace says as he holds his communicator away from his face somewhat. Well, considering one of the variants is literally a gutsy Earthani, I'm inclined to agree. Emmanuel notes before leaving earshot entirely. He wants to watch, but duty calls. He unfurls his wings and launches upwards before quickly descending upon the portal area that leads to the heart of the Serpent Empire. The main teleportation region was at the bottom of the ramp to Isorizen's palace temple home. His wings snap out again and he flies at the more sedate, reasonable pace closer to a standard Orthani. He's waved in by Isorizen herself and lands next to her. While I welcome you here without reservation, you are not the type to move without purpose. What has happened? You know that we were searching for the nest so that the truth of the breaking of things can finally be uncovered. Yes, you said that if you were lucky, you'd find some preserved mementos that could be given to the family lines of those that survived them. The rest would go into a museum and memorial to the tragedy. We found survivors. I... What? We have found survivors. Then why wouldn't they have... How? Are there more primals, other races that live longer? Or is it a race that dwells completely beneath the water? I think one is called the Lydris. The Lydris are amphibians. You're thinking about the AKA. They can breathe air, but have little way of getting around outside of the water. So there's another kingdom? No, I apologize. I've been explaining this terribly. Do you remember what a stasis pod is? I'm told you were in one when you arrived on Lacrin. I was. So, crystal sarcophagus have been found. Many of them. One of them, we're sure, has someone alive inside it. A male someone. I see. I think you need to speak with the Grand Midwives first. You're one of my first concerns. As you are from the crash yourself, you might recognize some of them. Oh, she says, blinking. Then why would? Do you remember anything from that time? He asks gently. I, it's so faint, so very, very faint and far away. If my memories are spun glass, then the dreams I had last month are solid stone by comparison, she says softly. That's a fair point. But you need to brace yourself. Even if you don't remember them, some of them might remember you. Do you think they might remember my mother as well? I can't promise anything. Emmanuel says. They might, but there's no guarantee in any direction. There's also some types of stasis sickness that can blur memory so badly it takes decades to recover from. Are you worried? She asks him. 
there are a million things that can go wrong rescuing and waking these people. So yes, but it's far too deep in the water for me to be of much use. I'm afraid the darkest ocean depths are a place where you, my dear, have a far greater advantage than I likely ever will. Oh, like you won't find some way to get things done. I already have, but the real problem isn't the water. Then what is it? I don't want to worry my mother, he admits, and startles a soft laugh out of her. Yes, yes, that's a very good reason. I can relate to her. Now that some of my old wrinklers are back to firm and fierce finesse, I just want to grab each one of my revived daughters, wrap around them, and hold them tight forever. My mother thinks I haven't seen it, but I've noticed her disposing of bits of webbing from time to time. That only happens when she wants something tied down and safe, namely me. She's going to hurt herself if she keeps worrying about you. I hope not. Things were going to be stressful and complicated before I went and became, well, this, he says before heaving a sigh and then running a claw over his antenna. Still, you have been warned. I need to get the grand midwives and star seekers to start spreading things now. You really did come to me first. Of course, this is important for everyone, but personal for you, he says, and she smiles at him. Thank you. I, hmm, now's not the time for that. I can make time. Not when these kinds of things are happening. Go and make sure there is peace on our home for the sake of your mother and my daughters both. You should consider yourself more, Emmanuel says, and she scoffs. I'm immortal. I need the least amount of care here. I can take it, and therefore I need to make sure my daughters don't have to, she assures him. I can take a vehicle scale laser right to the chest and not even blink. That doesn't mean I should. He replies and she nods before a thoughtful look crosses her face. And before you ask, vehicle-grade laser was as far as Horace and I could test before Mother caught us, and then promptly giving a blistering lecture and destroying every weapon we couldn't keep out of her hands. Really? Really. Also, do remember that for as much as a dedicated scholar Mother is, she's still a brute arcana, meaning she can not only move fast enough to blur, but also has a crushing type of strength so immense that she can rip the external plating from a ship barehanded. Why are you telling me that? So, you can mentally picture how she destroyed the weapons. She took your toys from you and crushed them barehanded? Izarizen asks in a highly amused tone. How did you become a primal again? She asks around the giggles bubbling up. A very strange set of circumstances he says with a smile, and she shakes her head in response. Fair enough, you fluffy menace. Now go warn the others. She says, rearing up to grab him around the shoulders, turn him around and give him a push. Moments later, the oldest living woman on Lacron is wondering if she can keep that title, seeing the twisting presence of so many of her darling daughters slithering up and down the paths and ramps warms her heart even as she watches the stately and yet delicate flight that is the natural gait of a moth, even one as large and heavy as the primal Urthani. Shimius Reikais Ki Breeks All right, that's the news spreading from the best sources to spread it. What have I missed? Is more needed on my end? Emmanuel asks as he re-enters the control station. The meeting with the Starseeker Council and the elders of the Grand Midwives had gone both businesslike and easily. They accepted that there was a possibility of more survivors with ease, especially as both groups had either recently gotten a lesson on stasis chambers or had been in discussion with what to do with his own. The crystal sarcophagus was a borderline religious relic now. Hail great moth, someone shouts out, and he dutifully ignores it. Okay, it was a full-on religious relic at this point, but come on. Are you sure you have time for us? Your supplicants seem to want some attention. His mother teases him, and he sighs. To answer your question, we've been taking a tally of stasis pods. So far, we've found four groups of 30, 
but have only gone through a fraction of the ship. The nest was an enormous vessel, as appropriate for a colony ship. It was meant to be converted into a full-scale city after landing, after all. True. If we could... Hmm. He begins to say as his mind churns. It goes to the axiom totem he had been planning for himself. If we could give a pressure resistance totem to a collection of Hydro Nagasha, we could get more people down there. They won't have the training of your girls, but it would give each one an entire team to work with, which will speed things up. No, they'll just get in the way. And if they make any mistakes, and they likely will, the rescue mission becomes a lot more desperate and immediate. One lost totem and those girls will find themselves so deep they'll have seconds to live, but teleporting out of danger will give them pressure sickness. And it's beyond crush depth for our walking subs and other water-based vehicles, something to look into and improve on. We have only one deep water acclimatized soldier with us, a Lydris man. We've been calling him Hercules, mostly because he looks like what would have happened if Hercules slew the Hydra with his dick rather than a blade and burning torch. Really? Classic Greek looks, strong man build, and there's ten of the bastard, Horace says. And let me guess, not trained in search and rescue, Emmanuel asks wryly. No, but he can clear an entire hostile hangar bay in two seconds flat, Horace states. Put a pin in that. If they turn out hostile, the big guy may be of use. Actually, how big is he? Normal Lydris or a Lydris scaled up as if you were part of one? Scaled up, Horace says, and Emmanuel does some fast math. Dude needs three dedicated cooks, doesn't he? Emmanuel asks. Pretty much. Granted, those chefs can and do make industrial amounts of food in the blink of an eye, Horace states. We found another room. Six rows of five again. The dive team states, This one is in much better shape. Numerous pods are clearly at full power. Checking the remainder. 150 potential survivors. What's the living and dead ratio? That's not what you should be concerned about, Morgana tells her son. What's the male to female ratio? Reversed from standard, she says, and Emmanuel pauses. We have nearly 150 potential men down there? Yes, and the worst of the pods have still had their tertiary power systems up and moving. This could not be legal. I was thinking much the same. Barring the woman, the silhouettes are identical. Biped mammal outline. No markings for a specific species. Same height, same width, same breadth. More clones? Emmanuel asks. It may have been from this part of the ship that the grand midwives learned how to make their clone pregnancies. So the question is, what kind of clone are we looking at? The best answer is probably from the female that's frozen in time. She's likely responsible for this. And speaking of responsible, where do they go? Morgana asks, and the brothers look to each other. No words are spoken, but a lot is said. They're of Lacran first. If they want to be of the Undaunted later, that's up to them, Emmanuel states. Agreed. Better a civilian behind you than someone incompetent or unwilling beside you. Horace confirms. This room is clear and alive, renewing sweep. The search team states, 